Hello and welcome to my channel. In this video we are going to solve the 27th question from CBC class 10 2023-24 additional practice questions from mathematics standard with subject code 041 section C. Now this question is from the polynomials chapter. Riddhi throws a stone in the air such that it follows a parabolic path before it lands at P on the ground as depicted on the graph below. The above graph is represented by a polynomial where the sum of its zeros is 1 and the sum of the squares of its zero is 25. Find the coordinates of P and Q. And the second sub question is, if one unit on the graph represents 25 meters, how far from Riddhi does the stone land? Now let us try to understand the question first. Now they have given us a graph where they show Riddhi throwing a stone. And she throws it in such a way that it forms a parabola. Parabola is usually a U-shaped graph or an N-shaped graph and it always represents quadratic polynomial. So this graph is a hint that we are going to solve a quadratic polynomial question. And the next thing we have to know that they have given two more hints that is sum of its zeros is 1 and sum of the squares of its 0 is 25. Since this is a quadratic polynomial, so we are going to have here two zeros, alpha and beta. So let us write down the general form of quadratic polynomial first. So here we have written, consider the polynomial since it is quadratic, it is written as ax square plus bx plus c where a, b and c are the coefficients of x. And since this is quadratic polynomial, we have two zeros and they are represented as alpha and beta. Next, we are going to write sum of the zeros and sum of the square of the zeros. So let us start by writing the sum of the zeros first. So sum of the zeros is alpha plus beta. So alpha plus beta. They have given that in the question this is equal to 1. So let us write it as 1. And consider this as our equation 1. And the next statement is sum of square of zeros. So I have written here sum of square of zeros. That means we are going to square these uh, zeros and we are going to add them up and write it as alpha square plus beta square. So these are the square of zeros and we are summing them up and this is equal to 25. So let us write here 25 and let us take this equation as equation 2. Now let us come back to the equation 1. Now here I am going to square both the sides. So let me show you how I am going to do it. I am going to write here alpha plus beta is equal to 1 and I am going to square both the sides. So this becomes alpha plus beta whole term squared is equal to 1 squared. Now using the algebraic formula, let me write the formula here. So this is the algebraic identity we are going to make use here. That is a plus b the whole square is equal to a square plus b square plus 2ab. So this is of the same format that is alpha plus beta the whole square. So I am going to write here alpha square plus beta square plus 2 alpha beta is equal to 1 square is 1 times 1 which gives you 1 itself. Now alpha square plus beta square we know the value because it was given in the question that alpha square plus beta square is 25. So in place of alpha square and beta square we are going to substitute 25. So 25 plus 2 alpha beta is equal to 1. Now let me take 25 on the other side of equal to sign. So we are going to get it as 2 alpha beta is equal to 1 minus 25. So let us further solve this. 2 alpha beta is equal to 1 minus 25 is minus 24. So dividing both the sides by 2, we are going to get here divided by 2 and divided by 2. 2 divides itself, so 1 times 1 times and 2 divides here, 2 1 times, 2 12 times. So we have got the value of alpha beta as negative 12. 
so we are going to keep it aside so highlight it and keep it and let us consider this as equation 3 now after we have got this let us write down the relationship between the zeros that is alpha and beta of the polynomial and the coefficients of the given polynomial a b and c so we can write here so sum of zeros is written as alpha plus beta in terms of zeros and this will be equal to negative b over a in terms of coefficients now here alpha plus beta value was given in the question as 1 so here we are going to write 1 equal to minus b over a or we can just simply write it as taking a on the other side of equal to sign a is equal to negative b or b is equal to negative a so let me highlight this we are going to make use of this later on so b is equal to negative a that is transferring negative on the other side of equal to sign next product of zeros is given as alpha times beta and in terms of coefficients it is given as c over a and alpha times beta we have got it as negative 12 so negative 12 equal to c over a again taking a on the other side of equal to sign we are going to write it as c is equal to negative 12 a so i will highlight this as well so we have got b and we have got c now let us write the general form of the polynomial where we had it as ax square plus bx plus c now let us keep the ax square as it is ax square now b we have got it as negative a so in place of b i am going to substitute negative a x and in place of c we got negative 12 a so we are going to put negative 12 a here the next thing we have to do here is assume that a is equal to 1 you can take any number for a but choose the easiest value you can take 2 3 and 4 but the numbers become very large to factorize so the easiest one is to choose the value of a as 1 so we will assume that the value of a is 1 so let us take a equal to 1 and put it over here so here we are going to get it as 1x square minus 1x minus 12 times 1 I'm just going to simply write it as x square minus x and minus 12. Now we have to factorize this quadratic equation that we have got that is using splitting the middle term. So here we are going to write it as x square minus x minus 12. So let us factorize this that is we look at this term that is the constant term that is negative 12 and we have to find out the factors of negative 12 such a way that when we add or subtract those factors we should get negative 1 that is the middle term so the factor which we can think about here is 4 and 3 and let us consider negative 4 negative 4 times 3 gives us negative 12 and negative 4 plus 3 gives us negative 1 so these factors will fit over here so let me just split it up and write here as x square and negative 1x will be written as negative 4x plus 3x minus 12. Now we have to factorize this. I am going to group it as first two terms and last two terms. And in the first two terms we are going to take the commons out. We can see that 1x is a common term. So x is out and here when we take 1x out another x remains. So x minus 4 only 4 remains over here plus from 3x minus 12 3 is a common factor so we can take it out and inside the bracket we get x minus 4 again so here again we are going to take x minus 4 common out as one of the factors and x plus 3 is our next factor so now we have factorized it here to find out the values of x now we are simply going to equate it equal to 0 so here we get x minus 4 equal to 0 and x plus 3 equal to 0. So one of the values of x we get here is minus 4 goes on the other side and it becomes plus 4. 
and minus 3 goes on the other side of the equal to sign and we get x equal to negative 3. So, these are the x coordinates of p and q points. Now, let us come back to the graph over here and if we look at the graph, point p is towards the positive x axis and point q is towards the negative x axis. So, obviously, the coordinate of point p will be positive. So, we got positive 4 comma 0 is the y coordinate because point p is on the x axis. So, y coordinate will be 0 and for q we get the negative value of x that is negative 3 comma again the y coordinate is 0 because q is also on the x axis. So, y coordinate will be 0. So, we have got the coordinates of point P and coordinates of point Q. So, let us write over here point P is going to be 4 comma 0 and point Q is going to be negative 3 comma 0. So, this is the answer for the first part of the question. Finding coordinates of P and Q. Now, the second part is if one unit on the graph represents 25 meters, how far from Riddhi does the stone land? Now, Riddhi is at point negative 2 over here and when she throws the stone, it goes and falls at point P which is at x coordinate 4. Now, let us find out the distance between Riddhi that is from here till point P over here. To find that out, we can make use of the number line. That is, if this is negative 2, let us consider this is negative 1, this is 1, this is 2, this is 3 and this is 4, where the stone has landed. So, let us find out the distance now. So, here between minus 2 and minus 1, it is 1 unit, minus 1 to 0, 1 unit, 0 to 1, 1 unit. 1 to 2, 1 unit, 2 to 3, 1 unit and 3 to 4 is 1 unit. So, total we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. So, total we get 6 units between Riddhi and the stone. So, distance between these two is 6 units in terms of meters. Here they have given 1 unit is 25 meters. So, we can write 6 units is 6 times 25 meters which will give us 150 meters is the distance between Riddhi and the stone. So, this is how we solve the second question. I hope you have understood all the steps and like the video. If you know any other way of solving this example, do comment below. And if you are liking my videos, like, share and subscribe to my channel. And thank you for watching.